Is every seat accounted for? Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Central North Division Contest. Yes, I'm going to have to say, the strongest division. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to go on. I'm going to cut half of my jokes because we're running a little late you know, and I want to be really sensitive to time. So I really do appreciate all those who got here on time and we just had to pull things a little together. But you are here to have a good time and you're going to hear some of the best speeches coming out of District 30. Now on that note, I do want to just briefly recognize all the important people. Now all of you are. <laughs> I want you to know that you all are important, but some people we just need to just recognize just a little bit. First of all, we see sipping water over here, our district governor, Sweeney Bot Sanini. Over here, just dying to be called on, the immediate past district governor, Kyle Roney. because I want to keep the district leadership humble. <laughs> Just a little humble. I know Joan's here. I'm getting you, you in my routine. <laughs> <laughs> of course, our second person, our Lieutenant Governor of Education and Training, dear friend of mine, Joan. here just wanted to make sure and I just pardon okay well I didn't see you briefly I just want my fellow division governors to just say hello stand I want all the area governors in the house to say hello two quick two quick questions I'm gonna turn it over to our Toastmaster for this evening's event. I want to know, since you started the new year in Toastmasters, who has earned a competent communicator award? Sure. All right. Very good. We're giving a round of applause and that's what we want. How many of you have completed a CL award? Competent leader? Right. Ooh, I'm scared of these things. That's what Toastmasters is all about, isn't it? Communication and leadership. Now, enough of me. <laughs> Don't cry. I'm going to turn it over to the Toastmaster for the evening. No one other than Tim Wilson. everyone else who has not been recognized. <laughs> I first recognized all the other Toastmasters who give the dignitaries someone to order around. <laughs> and I recognize the guests who we hope will give us their money. <laughs> Without you, all this would not be possible. Thank you. <laughs> Give yourself a big round of applause. Now, this is the point where someone usually says something like, this is going to be a great contest, we're going to have a great contest. And I've been thinking about this. How do you know? <laughs> what if it's a really lousy contest? And I 
promise you a good contest. And you come out right afterwards and tell me you said it was going to be a great contest, and this one really was kind of, you know. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm not going to say anything now. After the contest is over, you tell me if we had a great contest. Okay? All right. All right. Okay. One thing I learned as a speaker, and maybe some of you are speakers too, maybe you learned this also. The audience is the ultimate judge of the speaker, contest, anything. The audience is the ultimate judge. Okay. Please set your cell phone on loud. Please set your ringtone to annoying. <laughs> if you are competing, know that during your speech, people will be wandering in and out of the room. <laughs> flash photography is encouraged, especially really bright flash photography when someone's in the middle of their speech. <laughs> Wait a minute, I think that's a typo there. <laughs> Turn your cell phones off. In fact, put your cell phones on the floor and just kind of stomp on them, just to make sure. And we need to get the sergeant arm something to do, so no one allowed in and out during the speeches. If you want, you can try to do a really quick run to the exit between the minute of silence. And no flash photography during the contest. That okay? About about covers it? All right. Now, the contestants and functionaries have been briefed, and if they're anything like me, they kind of nodded their heads and figured they'd all figure it out once the contest actually got started. And the thing is, the functionaries all know the rules, which is really good. Otherwise, you have to read through all the rules, and that would be really boring here. So don't want to do that. And I think we're about ready to begin. So, Toastmasters of District 30, are you ready to rumble? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> now, I will read off the contestant speaking order in the order they are speaking. Contestant number one, Wiley Blanchard. Wiley Blanchard. Contestant number two, Prez Vasilev. Prez Vasilev. Contestant number three, Stephen Fru. Stephen Fru. Contestant number four, Amy Sagami. Amy Sagami. And contestant number five, Michael Beckett. Michael Beckett. And now, here are the contestants in speaking order backwards. Contestant number five, Michael Beckett. Contestant number four, Amy Sagami. Contestant number three, Stephen Fru. Contestant number two, Press Vasilov. Contestant number one, Wiley Blanchard. And those are all the rules we have. If you come up with any of the rules you'd really like to have, like nobody humming tunes that you really hate and you can't get out of your head, let me know, and we'll see if we can do something about that. But for right now, we are ready to begin. Quick question. Is this the table topics or the international speech contest? And we're ready to begin the table topics contest. Thank okay. you. So, Mr. Sergeant Arms, you please escort all the contestants out of the room except for the first contestant. Is that two of them? Mr. Toastmaster, I'd be happy to. Thank you. Come on this way, Trust <laughs> 
<laughs> I've been competing in there. I don't want to trust me either. <laughs> Test number one, Wiley Blanchard. You have just won the Olympic Games, and you've got an Olympic gold medal. Give your acceptance speech to the audience for this historic event. Test number one, Wiley Blanchard. I can't believe you guys, I can't believe you chose me. <laughs> I can't believe I actually won this, and I, I did it on my own. Let me go ahead and give thanks to everyone who helped participate in this. I want to thank my trainer. I, I want to thank the little kid who ice cream I took yesterday. I want to thank my mom. I want to thank my dad. I want to thank that little kid I knocked down yesterday. I, I just want to thank everyone who's had a hand in me winning this gold medal. Um, I, I want you to know that I only worked half as hard as everyone else, but I'm here. And I, and I want you to know that I only really gave about 2% effort while I was in the process of winning this thing, but I am here with you. So, thank you very much. Um, besides thanking everyone who's helped participate in my growth, in me winning this contest, I also want to mention that I'm really the only one here who really deserves to win anything. <laughs> now, I know that doesn't sound very appreciative, but I want you to consider for one moment. Just consider. I mean, they lost. <laughs> if you really think about it, my trainer, all my friends, and everyone who's helped me get here, how much effort did they really put into this? Did they really work as hard as me? <laughs> did they really put the, their foot into this game? Like I put my foot into this game? No. Did they almost break an ankle? I almost broke an ankle, but I won this thing. <laughs> I just want to thank everyone in this process. What am I going to do next? I know that's what you're thinking. I'm not going to Disney World. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Okay? I don't want to meet the president. Let someone else do that. Okay? I, I don't want to meet anyone of any political status. I, I, I don't want to meet the chairman of whatever he is of this Olympic game. All I really want to do next is gloat. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't gloating. This is just saying thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Silence while the judges mark the ballots. Try and keep her please only the one minute up. Do you need any more time? Test number two, Fred Seelick. You have just won an Olympic gold medal. Give your acceptance speech to the audience for this historic event. Res Vasile. Mr. Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters, distinguished guests, yes! <laughs> Have you ever felt the power that runs through your veins when you achieve something momentous? 
I achieved. One of the prizes of the year. One of the prizes of the century. A prize that will be remembered forever. Olympic Golden Medal in public speaking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my friends, and how I achieved that? I achieved that by the help of a great organization. An organization that I discovered two years ago that completely transformed my life. Of course, it developed my sexy accent as well. <laughs> <laughs> but those masters, my friends, those masters, think of every single opportunity that it gives you to grow, to learn, to compete. <laughs> what a great organization. And I owe this Olympic medal to all of you because I have been preparing diligently for it. I've been attending each and every club, trying to join as many as I can, <laughs> hoping that I won't achieve bankruptcy. <laughs> but still, it's the thrill of continuing and striving for that excellence. How about you? What will be your Olympic medal? What's your dream? What would you like to achieve? How is Toastmasters helping you do that? Mr. Gomez. Judge need any more time? Table contestant number three, Stephen Fro. <laughs> You've just won an Olympic gold medal. Give your acceptance speech to the audience for this historic event, Stephen. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests, from the day I was this tall, I wanted to play basketball. <laughs> but I never did until I was an adult. Then, in my mind, I could visualize myself at the Olympics. Could I do it? Could my team make the gold medal at the Olympics? I thought back to my childhood, those days of dribbling the ball up and down the driveway, backing up to that imaginary three-point line, shooting and scoring. Could we do it in the Olympics? In my mind, we put together a team from our half-court game at the high school every Tuesday night. We practiced. We focused. It came down to the wire. It was time for one last shot. I passed the ball to my teammate as he cut for the basket. He passed back to me. I backed up to the three-point line, just like, 
John Paxton had done for the Bulls, just like the three-point line is there, time seemed to stop. I backed up, shot, scored. Through the hope, the crowd went wild. We had won the Olympic gold medal, perhaps in my next life. <laughs> Thank you. I just need more time. <clears throat> Test of number four. Amy Sagan. <clears throat> You've just won an Olympic gold medal. Give your acceptance speech to the audience for this historic event. Amy. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and welcome guests. Thank you for being here to witness this historical event. There's never, ever in the history of mankind that a Chinese woman would win this gold medal of walking on water. <laughs> <coughs> My parents did not try to push me into the water as a little kid. It would not have happened if I didn't have my full mechanical engineering training because, do you know your physics? If it's cold enough, you could walk on water. <laughs> <laughs> so now the world really knows the secret of walking on water is when the temperature is cold enough. And I could not thank enough for the audience, for the physics, for the environment to keeping the water clean so that I can actually demonstrate this historical event of walking on water. Now that you know the secret, I'm sure in the future I will see many or more of you to participate in this Olympic game of walking on water. Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs> I just need more time. Mm -hmm. 
contestant number five, Michael Beckett. You have just won an Olympic gold medal. Give your acceptance speech to the audience for this historic event, Michael Beckett. This is an amazing accomplishment, considering I've never trained. <laughs> I barely did sports in high school. Didn't really continue doing so in college. But I found that ribbon throwing, <laughs> a gymnastic sport, might be something I was capable of doing. And very little time at all, I came up with a routine. I practiced diligently for two or three weeks. <laughs> and I tried out for the Olympic team. Gratefully, to my other astonish astonishment, I was the only contestant that year. <laughs> so I was able to advance to the next round and represent the USA as a contestant. Rightfully so, I was nervous. I didn't expect to get this far. But I did make it, and strangely enough, the ribbon activity in gymnastics was continued to be a less than popular activity. Uh, part of the Olympics, and so all I had to do was show up. <laughs> I gave my two-minute routine, and I made sure I was within time, <laughs> and the judges granted me the gold medal. They kept the silver and bronze, so we'll see that for next time. <laughs> and by doing so, I'm standing before you with great pride, about to sing the national anthem. <laughs>
All ballots have been collected. And now here's Cynthia to plug the spring <coughs> Now, one of the things I've learned being in leadership is delegate, delegate, delegate. That's why I'm going to call Jerry Evans up. Jerry, 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 Jerry. The club, the conference you want to be at because I think somebody special is coming, aren't they, Jerry? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name again? <laughs> Fellow Toastmasters, a most welcome guest. Conferences, TLIs, are two of my favorite things to attend, especially conferences, having been involved in three of them. Well, we as a district have a special privilege this year because we are hosting the international president, Mr. Michael Nataro. I think Kyle in what, six years? Seven years? Six years. So we haven't had a presidential visit in six years. So that's pretty phenomenal. We had a chance to meet Michael at, in fact, Pres and I, and a number of others had a chance to meet him at the International Convention last year. So I think all of you certainly will enjoy meeting him. But more importantly, he'll have a chance to see how great District 30 is and meet a lot of our members. And as he comes to the district, I think Srinivas has a dubious distinction of being host to our international president, yes. correct? Yes. And making some visits, perhaps, maybe to someone's club in this room. Okay. So Moni will have that privilege. The, two, the dates to remember are April 20th, which is a Friday and April 21st, which is Saturday. Friday night is a table topics contest. I know all of you want to turn out for that. And of course, Saturday is which contest? International, International, speech. International speech contest. So, for the person who goes on to the International Convention, how appropriate with their International President being here and seeing our representative from District 30 to go on to the International Convention. I think that's pretty phenomenal. Along with, of course, the Achievers Breakfast, which for those of you who have accomplished and achieved an educational award, that's 7 o'clock Saturday morning. And then, of course, we have the thing that all of us want to go to, especially those of us who are officers. You want to attend the business meeting because we are electing new, new district officers. That's correct. And then we have the infamous and the most famous, one of my favorite activities, is the Banner, Banner Parade. So I hope all of you will certainly participate in that. It's always interesting to see how creative entertaining the clubs get in representing their clubs, so you really get a flavor of what the club is all about and their personality. And as we get into the day goes on, Michael's speaking, what, Sweeney, three times or four times? Four times. Four times. So he'll be the keynote speaker Friday night, Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, and then Saturday at the dinner program. I have to tell you for the contest, so none of you are overly surprised about this, I believe we're not going to make the announcements, though, until Saturday night, is that yes. correct? For both contests, so don't be surprised for the Tabletops contestants that you won't find out who the winners are until Saturday. Tabletops contestants will find out. Well, they will Friday night. Okay, excellent. Educational sessions. Saturday afternoon, we have concurrent educational sessions, so I encourage all of you to attend some of those. Kind of pick out the ones that you like the best and resonate the strongest with you. And how many of you have been to a conference? Okay, I would encourage all of you to encourage your fellow Toastmasters to come out to the conference as many as possible so that we can support our fellow Toastmasters, support our international uh, president's visit here, attend the educational sessions, and more importantly, have an opportunity to network with your fellow Toastmasters throughout the district. I think that about covers everything. Madam When's the agenda going to be posted online? It is. It is? It, it is posted. I don't think they, we don't have a specific yet, I believe, yes. in terms of the exact it's session. Online. It's on? Okay. It's all. It's there now? Okay. All right. Okay. Madam Division Governor. Now, we didn't plan that. Wasn't he smooth? Ooh. Now, when I say delegate, you say.
say delegate back to me. Delegate. 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 If you look at your agenda, there's another thing that that's just as important too, and it is our training. And I'm going to call on somebody I know whose heart is in that area of training. Now I promise not to pick on the top three. I'm giving him a break. Don Williams, can you come up here, sir? All right. Uh, Don is going to convince. Good, that, good evening, everyone. Good evening. <laughs> Our spring TLI is June 23rd, and it will be held at the Chicago Marriott, 61. Correction. The Marriott, uh, the Renaissance, the Chicago O'Hare. That's, that's not the correct address. Then that's Rosemont, Illinois? Yes. Okay. Uh, the correct information could be found on the district website, d30toastmasters.org, for anyone interested. It is an event not to miss. Leadership is very important, and we want to make sure that the club officers in our club are well trained. It's also an event not to miss for anyone who's interested in learning more about Postman, because there will be educational uh, sessions for anyone in your family, and co workers, friends, where they can learn more about Postmaster. Manifest. When I say leadership, you say, sir, 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 if you really want to be a good leader, you have to learn how to serve. So when I say leadership, you say, sir. When I say leadership, you say, sir. Wonderful. The clock has 6.45. Five minutes, get you something to eat, run to the washroom, and we'll call everybody back in five minutes. <laughs> Amy.